Hi, this is Francis Sadeko with TRS Research. I'm here with Sadika Devrekar. She's the Senior Director for AI Hub. Um, and we're getting a, a, actually a really cool chance to see the AI Hub in action here while we're at the uh, AI Analyst Workshop in San Diego. You know, one of the great things that Sadika mentioned in her talk was that, you know, uh, software developers right now with AI Hub are able to get a new model in in basically five minutes and you said five lines of code. So I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> so I'll hand it off to Sadika right now and uh, we'll see we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'll walk you through the journey as if you were a developer, I'm a developer. We'll just, we'll just go and see what, what people do with AI Hub. So here is AIHub.Qualcom.com. As a developer, I will come to this site. Uh, and you know, I, I'm probably a mobile developer or an IoT developer or a computer developer, and I can look at any one of these spaces. But let's say I'm a, I'm, let's pretend we are a mobile developer. Uh, I would go in here, I'll click on mobile. And here you can see a whole bunch of models that are already pre-optimized. Uh, for you know whether it's audio enhancement, you can look at audio enhancement. You can look at computer vision. There is a whole bunch within computer vision. There is image classification, editing, and so on. Um, and then you you know based on what your use case is. Let's say you're doing the photo editing uh, bit in your application. Uh, you could say that cool. I, that's what I want to do. I'm going to pick uh, ResNet 101. That's the model that I like. Uh, it's a detection model. I'm going to go with that model. Even before you start running the model, uh, you can take a look at what is the inference time, how much memory is it using, where is the model running, is it entirely on NPU, is it on CPU, is it on GPU, is it mixed bag, uh, and that gives you the first sense of can I just pick this model and get started very easily. Um, that's, not, that's not it. We even go one level deeper and give you even more details. Now, as you see, I'm not logged in, so without even logging in, you can get all of this information. You can see uh, you know, what is the first upload time, what is the subsequent upload. Uh, very important for your experience that you're building because that impacts directly your user. How slow is it going to be for a user to ex experience it? Uh, not just that, we'll tell you where each layer runs as well. So you can do even more deeper analysis. The reason why developers use this is sometimes they want to make changes to their model architecture and that will allow them to, to know where exactly do these changes, which layer is consuming, how much uh, time, and so on. Right? So they get a deeper understanding. Do the it, developers have the ability to to change for themselves which processor it's going to run on? That That's a good question. Yes, they do. Okay. So the API from AI Hub allows you to select either I want, you can say that, hey, you know, my CPU is going to be busy. Uh, I don't want you to touch it. Or my GPU is going to be busy. So you can use CPU and NPU, but do not touch the GPU. Uh, and that, that is allowed for with the API. You can give those options and you can set it up that way. But for those that might not be that advanced, there, I assume there's kind of a standard default setting for a particular model that's been pre-optimized. That's right. We, okay. we will run the model on the best, uh, op, you know, best processor that will give you the best experience. Perfect. That's by default uh, you know, what we do. Yeah. Um, if, if this information is enough for you, for your use case, so you, you went to a particular category, mobile, you picked from a whole bunch of models, a model, you went and looked at all the metrics, and if this is good, you will download the model right here and go use it in the app. So all I do is click this button and you'll see it will pop up for download and that's it, right? So that's what you do. But you're taking my word for it. I'm telling you this model is running at, at this performance, this optimization, and that may not be good enough for you. You might want to run it yourself. That's when I will go one layer deeper and I'll say, okay, I'm not happy with this. I want to run uh, the model myself. The model is in our model repository. We host this repository on GitHub. You can go there. Or you can go to Hugging Face, which is very, very popular point for developers to start. Um, on Hugging Face, we have the same information duplicated. So literally everything that you saw there, you see it here too. Uh, and you see these five lines that I talked about? These are your five lines. So the first line is to install the client, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to open a Collab notebook. You know, I've already installed uh, a package here, so I'm going to I'm going to start with uh, you know the next line. So the first first is to install a package, which is the which which is you know, this this particular one I'm scrolling. Uh, pip install Qualcomm AI Hub models, which will fetch the models, which will install the AI Hub client on your machine, and that will establish a connection with the real device farm and our service. So it is you who's talking to the device. It is the user. You're authenticated. Your model, nobody else can see it. It's, it's a secure space that you're running everything in, including the ser ser server at that point. Uh, the next thing that I do, uh, if I go back here, uh, is you have to sign in and get your API token. 
uh, this is just a one time step that you have to do I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go to settings and I'm going to get my my own key and this is my key so I have grabbed my key it's a unique key to myself and I will go and put it and I will configure and while you're doing that it's worth noting that even though it's authenticating and under that's really more for just kind of privacy and and making sure that only your data is what you can see and only you can see that data Correct. it has nothing to do with any kind of feeds because ai hub is free is free to everybody so yeah. that's that's even better um, a lot of times our customers you know we have large isb customers oems we have small mom pop developers large developers they all ask us you know this is my proprietary model i don't want to share it with anyone yeah. and we want to accommodate that so in this case you still get to run the model on all of our devices using AI Hub, but we don't want to share it with anybody. If you choose to share, you can create a team in AI Hub, you can create an organization, and you can say that, okay, now, now this is a team of me and you, Francis, and I'm going to share with Francis the model, right? And that you can do. But unless you explicitly do it, it is not going to happen on its own. Uh, and that's what this achieves. So we did the step two. Uh, and now I have too many models open here, so I'm going to... Uh, you know, go to the next one. Uh, I'm going to skip through. You can do a demo on target. I'm going to skip that. That just runs the model as uh, as a demo on your machine. Mm -hmm. You could be having any machine. Uh, we'll just go to the last one, which is this one. Uh, and this is just one line of code. And I'm going to run this one. Okay, so in this case, it's asking me, hey, do you want to clone uh, clone the model? Do you want me to bring the model over? I'm saying, yes, I want to use this model, bring it over. Uh, it, it did that, it brought the model over. And now you can see it's optimizing the model for on-device run. So you can see exactly what it did. It uploaded the model, so you can see here. Mm -hmm. uh, it scheduled the compilation job, so it's going to now compile the job so that it is ready for the target device, prepare it for the target device. The compilation is successful. Uh, now it's profiling the job, right? So it's profiling that model. It's actually running iteratively the model in an application on the device that you actually fetch. Um, and it's giving you a link to see, hey, here is uh, inference that's also running. That is for accuracy. So it's telling you, I'm also running an inference job to tell you uh, a performance, if good, look at the inference quality. If good, you can use it. So I'm now gonna go to this link. And as soon as I go to this link, you can see it, it has started provisioning the device. So at this point, it's fetching the device from a real, real physical device. This is a real, Samsung Galaxy S23 that I'm running on. It is fetching that device, it's provisioning it, and it'll go through the next step. So so even before this, that was the point, right before you got to this part, that was the point where that's the five minutes right there. Correct. And that's uh, it, now you're looking at results. Now you're looking at results, yeah. exactly. You're, you're cool. done with your task. Now you're gonna make a decision whether you will use this model or not. The, the video is nine minutes, but I'll give you a few minutes because I was <laughs> talking a lot and asking questions, so that's good. Yeah. <laughs> and this is measuring performance, as you can see. Now it's Perfect. now it's iteratively measuring performance, and it'll finish, uh, and it'll tell you here is what. Yeah, and the great thing about this is, you know, you you've got a target device, and you can select from, from a variety. From a variety. Of devices. How many devices do you guys have in uh, the oh, device? We, uh, we we have hundreds of devices. Hundreds of them. That's yeah. great. Uh, and and of various variety. Like I said, there are a lot of developers who come in, um, and who say that you know I want to run. So here's the job's completed. Yeah. Uh, you can you can see that you get all the information that's needed. Uh, we we target the device and the model such that the model runs in the best possible way on the device, gives you the best performance, best accuracy. So we are running it with TensorFlow Lite. It's using the underlying QNN library uh, and the delegate. It's running on an Android. You know exactly which OS it's running on, uh, which version of OS it's running on, and which is the version of AI Hub that you use. Um, you know, th this is an important information for debugging. Right. You, you want to know if something goes wrong, and it'll tell you exactly how long the model will take, what is the peak memory usage, did it run on entirely on NPU to answer your question, can I use GPU and CPU for something else? Mm -hmm. It tells you that, and it tells you all the other metrics, uh, runtime analysis, configuration, and so right. on. So within a few minutes, you already have everything that you need. You can also go in and visualize the model. So here, here I am, I'm, I'm visualizing the model, and I'm seeing, okay, where are all these layers running? 
uh, how good are they how you know can i optimize something is this graph how does the graph look uh, i i get to see a lot more information again this is the advanced developer if they want to do something uh, cool they can do that if all looks good uh, i just go back and i simply download the optimized model that's Perfect. it Click so, for use. so last time I spoke with Ziad about this in Mobile World Congress, uh, the AIPCs haven't come around yet. Is our AIPCs part of your device farm right. now? Yeah. So if you, I'll show you. Uh, you can go to AI Hub. Uh, you can go to Qualcomm AI Hub. You can go to Compute. Perfect. And that's where you get your Snapdragon Elite. Perfect. And you can run from Snapdragon Elite. Sadika, this has been great. Uh, hopefully, uh, th this helps everybody understand exactly how to use AI Hub and how quick and easy it is to, to get your models going. Thank you very much. Thank you.